ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದಿತಾಖಾನ್ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನಿಂದಾಂಜನ ಶರಾತಯಾಚುಂಡಿತೇಷ್ಠಿ ಮಾತುರಿ ಗೋಷ್ಠವಾಟಿ ರಾಧಾಕುಂಡಿರ್ವರ ಮಹೋರಾಧಿ ಮಾಧವಾಶಾಪ್ತ ಕೃಪಯಾಗುರು ತಂ ನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಗುರುದೇವಾಯ ಸರ್ವಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಪ್ರದಾಯಿನೆ ಸರ್ವಮಂಗಲೂಪಾಯ ಸರ್ವಾನಂದ ವಿಧಾಯಿನೆ ಯಂ ಪ್ರಜಂತ ಮನುಪೇತಮೇತಕೃತ್ಯಂದ್ವೈಪಾಯನೋ ವಿರಹ ಕಾತರಾಜುಹವ ಉದ್ರೇತಿ ತನ್ಮಯತರಭೂತಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಜ್ಞಾನದೀನ ಬಂಧು ಸ್ವಾನಂದಕರುಣೈಕಸಿಂಧು ವೃಂದಾವನಾಚಾರಾಯಸ್ವಭೋಜಗನ್ನಾಥ ಗುರು ಸಂಸಾರ ಬಂಧಿನಾಂ ಮಾಂ ಕಾಲದಷ್ಟ ಶರಣಂ ರಥ ಸಮ್ಮುಖ ಸಂಶಕ್ತಿ ಸಖೀ ಸಂಘ ನಿವಾಸಿ ಅಹಂ ಸತತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪಾಂ ಪರಾಂ ಸಖಿ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯಭಕ್ತಿರಸಂಯತ್ನೈರ್ಪಾಯಂಧಿ ಸನಾತನ ಪಂ ಪ್ರಭುಮಾಶ್ರಯಾಮಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಬೇಸ್ ಸೈಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ಮಿತೆ ಗುರು ಪಾದ ಪದ್ಮ ಭಕ್ತಿ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ತ್ರೇಂಡಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಿಶು ಭಕ್ತಿನಾಥ ದಂಡಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನಾಮ ನಿಷ್ಠ ಸಂತೋಷ್ ನಂಜನದಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಭುಜಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಂಗಾಮಾತ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆಲ್ ದ ವೈಷ್ಣವಿಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಅಬೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ನಾಸ್ತಿ ಅಯುಕ್ತ ಚಾಯುಕ್ತ ಭಾವನಾ ಚಾಭವಾನ ಚಾಭಾವಯಂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ಅಶಾಂತ ಪುತ ಸುಖ nasti that is not buddhi intelligence and that the realization of the supreme lord ayuktasya for one whose mind is disconnected and thus uncontrolled no no so also ayuktasya for such a disconnected and intelligent unintelligent person bhavana meditation on the supreme lord no no so also abhava yataha for the non meditative person shanti peace ashantasya for a person who is not peaceful kutah vaya sukham happiness but his mind is uncontrolled however does not have the intelligence to understand the service of the soul so then an unintelligent person is unable to meditate on the supreme lord a person unable to perform such meditation cannot attain peace and without peace where is the possibility of happiness sarata varshini shri krishna is speaking this verse beginning with nasty to indirectly strengthen the previous verse conclusion the intelligence of a person whose mind is uncontrolled will not become fixed in the self so the person is devoid of intelligence and unable to meditate on the supreme lord abhava yataha means that one who does not meditate meditate cannot have peace in other words he cannot become detached from the objects of the senses a disturbed person can find neither happiness nor pleasure in the self so this is the verse um uh, and also uh so this in this verse is uh nasti buddhira yuktasya na cha yuktasya bhavana na cha bhavayata shanti ashantasya kutah sukham na asti there cannot be buddhi transcendent intelligence ayuktasya of one who is not connected with krishna consciousness no not cha and ayuktasya of one devoid of krishna consciousness bhavana fixed mind in happiness no not cha and abhavayata of one who is not fixed shanti peace 
ashantasya of the unpeaceful kutaha where is sukham happiness one who is not in transcendental consciousness can have neither a controlled mind nor steady intelligence without which there is no possibility of peace and how can there be any happiness without peace unless one is in krishna consciousness there is no possibility of peace so it is confirmed in the fifth chapter that when one understands that krishna is the only enjoyer of all the good results of sacrifice and penance and that he is the proprietor of all universal manifestation that he is the real friend of all living entities then only can one have real peace therefore if one is not in krishna consciousness there cannot be a final goal for the mind disturbance is due to want of an un, of an ultimate goal and when one is certain that krishna is the enjoyer proprietor and friend of everyone and everything then one can with a steady mind bring about a peace therefore one who is engaged without a relationship with krishna is suddenly always in distress and is without peace however much one may make a show of peace and future advancement in life krishna consciousness is a self manifested peaceful condition which can be achieved only in relationship with krishna so this is a very nice purport and um, so bhagavad gita actually sometimes some good applications also i'm just trying out some applications and um, i was seeing this on internet uh, 2 2.56 and 266 nasti buddhira yuktasya na cha yuktasya bhavana na cha bhavayata shanti adantasya putas sukham mm. So here, for a person without self-control, nasty, there is no bhakti, wisdom, self-knowledge. Ayuktasya, for such a person, devoid of this intelligence, nacha asti, there is no bhavana, meditation on the Lord, purity of thought. Abhav, abhavayataha, for one without meditation, nacha asti, there is no shanti, peace. Ashantasya, for a person who has no peace, kutaha, where is sukham, happiness? A person bereft of self-control can have neither wisdom nor meditation. Without meditation, there is no peace, and without peace, where is the hope of happiness? So for the person of uncontrolled mind, there is no intelligence fixed on the soul, and no meditation on the Paramatma. Without meditation, he has no peace. Without peace, there is bliss. One who is not connected with the Supreme in Krishna consciousness, can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind without which there is no possibility of peace and how can there be any happiness without peace so krishna makes his statements clear by stating um by by stating the effects of the opposite condition for one who has not controlled the mind ayuktasya there is no intelligence no pragya fixed on the soul for one who not having such pragya arising from controlled mind meditation on the supreme lord bhavana also is not possible not performing meditation abhavataha he does not have peace the cessation of agitation from sense objects this person without peace does not have bliss sukham from the soul so this is actually uh, this particular um, so um, <clears throat> So next verse we'll take now. Um, so we have to write it on the board. Indriyana hi charat pravi tate tarasarhi pratnya vayu pravi mandasi. He because he or as vayu an unfavorable wind harati carries away navam a boat, ambasi on the ocean. Tadod similarly indriyana of the senses charataham. that wanders about their objects yet whichever sense manaha the mind anuvidhyate follows that that sense harati carries away lures towards its object pragyam the wisdom intelligence asya of that person bereft of self control as a boat on the ocean is thrown of course by an unfavorable wind similarly the wisdom of a person lacking self control is carried away by even one of the roaming senses that the mind might follow so um the mind which follows one of the moving senses steals away the intelligence as wind moves a boat on the water 
as a strong wind sweeps away a boat on the water even one of the roaming senses on which the mind focuses can uh, carry away man's intelligence so this was examines the person with no intelligence due to lack of control of the mind ayukta sa buddhi na described in the previous verse among all the senses moving towards their respective sense objects the mind follows after one sense in this way a person follows each of the senses such a mind takes away the intelligence or prajna of the person just as an unfavorable wind takes away a boat of course uh, of course which is being steered uh, somewhere on the water mm. so here um, shri so bhaktiran sai mar is telling that unless all of the senses are engaged in the service of the lord you are one of them engaged in the sense gratification can deviate the devotee from the path of transcendental advancement as mentioned in the life of maharaj ambarish all the senses must be engaged in krishna consciousness for that is the correct technique for controlling the mind so here um very nice um explanation is given by shri um bhaktidanda sai maharaj huh? important words are these are very important words indriyanam hi charatam janmano anuvidhiyate tastadasya harati pragyam vayur navami mambasi as a boat on the water is swept away by a strong wind even one of the senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence indriyanam means of the senses he suddenly charatam while roaming yet with which manaha the mind anuvidhiyate becomes constantly engaged that that asya is harati takes away pragyam intelligence vayu wind navam a boat eva like ambasi on the water as a boat on the water is swept away by a strong wind even one of the senses on which the mind focuses can carry away man's intelligence unless all of the senses are engaged in the service of the lord even one of them engaged in sense gratification can deviate a devotee from the path of transcendental advancement as mentioned in the life of maharaj ambarish all of the senses must be engaged in krishna consciousness for that is the correct technique for controlling the mind so here indriyanam hi charatam yanmano navidhiyate tadasya harati pragyam vayur navami mambasi indriyanam of the senses he suddenly charatam while wandering to the sense objects yet which goes towards any particular sense manaha the mind anuvidhiyate follows tad that asya of that person of uncontrolled senses harati it carries away pragyam intelligence vayu the wind nagam like a boat eva as ambasi on the water just as the wind sweeps away a boat on the water the mind of an unrestrained person runs behind any one of the senses that wanders towards its sense object a person with an uncontrolled mind does not have intelligence Shri Bhagwan establishes this point by speaking the words beginning with Indriya Aram. The mind follows any one of the senses as it wanders unrestrictedly amongst its respective sense objects. Such a person is forced to follow all the senses, all of the senses being controlled by the mind. In such a state, the mind is likened to an unfavorable wind sweeping away a boat on the water because it carries away a person's intelligence. So, uh, verse number sixty-eight. The Samadhyasya Mahabhava Nigra Nigrutani Sarvasha Nigrihitani Sarvasha Indriyan Indriyarthe Bhyata Se Pragya Pratishtita. The Samad therefore Yasya Hus Mahabhava or Mighty Ambal Nigrihitani and restrained Sarvasha in every respect Indriyani senses Indriyarthe Bhyata from the sense objects. Tasya Hus Pragya intelligence pratishtha fixed therefore a mighty am one one whose senses are completely restrained from their respective sense objects is of fixed intelligence yes means that whose 
that those whose minds are already under control are sthita pragya so krishna is the arjuna oh mighty amba just take from your hands you should also control your mind <clears throat> So Krishna is telling us that on his mind, Tashmadhyastha Mahabhao Vikritani Sarvasha Indriyani Nyaltha Vyas Tasya Patnya Patishthita Tasma, therefore, Yasya Huz Mahabhao or Mighty Ambar Nikrihitani So curb down Sarvasha all around Indriyani, the senses, Indriya Tibya from sense objects, his pragya intelligence, pratishtha, pratishtha. Therefore, oh, mighty Amman, one whose senses are restrained from their objects is certainly of state intelligence. As enemies are curbed by superior force, similarly the senses can be curbed not by any human endeavor, but only by keeping them engaged in the service of the Lord. One who has understood this, that only by Krishna consciousness is one really established in intelligence, that one should practice this art under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master is called sadhaka or a suitable candidate for liberation. So here, um, um, verse number 268. Tasma Mahabaho mahabhao nukri nikruhi tani sarvasha Indriyani Indriyar Thabya Tasya Pragya Pratishthitam E Mahabhav O Subduer of the Enemy Tasma therefore Yasya He whose Indriyani senses Nikritani are withdrawn Sarvasha fully Indriyar Thabya from the sense objects Tasya His Pragya Wisdom Pratishthitaha is firmly established Therefore O Subduer of the Enemy One whose senses are fully withdrawn from their objects is a person of firmly established wisdom. He who completely restricts the senses from the sense objects, or mighty am one, is fixed in pragya. Therefore, a mighty am one, one whose senses are restrained from their objects, is certainly of steady intelligence. He who controls his mind restricts his senses from sense objects, is fixed in intelligence. O mighty am one, Mahabhav, just as you control your enemies with your strength, you should also control your mind. So here Bhakti Dan Sai Mahal is also given purpose, Shila Gurudev, Shila Vishnajit Thakur Pa, Shila Bhakti Dan Shila Maharaj. So, um, next verse, Yani Sha Sarva Bhutanam Tasyam Jagarati Sanyami Yasyam Jagarati Bhutani Sani Sha Pashato Mune Ya what? Nisha is night, serve all Bhutanam of living entities. Tasyam, in that Jagarti is wakeful. Sayami, the self controlled. Yasyam, in which Jagrati are awake. Bhutani, all beings. Sa, that is Nisha, night. Pashyata, for the introspective. Mune, sage. What is night for all beings is a time of awakening for the self control. And the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. There are two classes of intelligent men. The one is intelligent in material activities for sense gratification, other is introspective and awake to the cultivation of self realization. Activities of the introspective sage or thoughtful man are night for persons materially absorbed. Materialistic persons remain asleep in such a night due to their ignorance of self realization. The introspective sage remains alert in the night of the materialistic man. The sage is, the sage feels transcendental pleasure in the gradual advancement of spiritual culture, whereas the man in materialistic activities, being asleep to self-realization, dreams of varieties of sense pleasure, feeling sometimes happy and sometimes distressed in his sleeping condition. The introspective man is always indifferent to materialistic happiness and distress. He goes on with his self-realization activities, undisturbed by material reaction. That which is night for all living beings who immersed in ignorance remain asleep to spiritual knowledge. Tasyam, in that night, 
Sayyami, the self-disciplined person, Jagarti, remains awake, joyful in his spiritual intelligence. Yes, Sam, that mundane intelligence in which Bhutani, all living entity, living beings, Jagarti, Jagrati, remain awake, experience the pleasure and pains, sorrows and delusions of worldly life. Sa, such mundane intelligence is Nisha, night, Munehe, for the sages. For the sage, Pashyata, who sees the futility of mundane endeavors and remains indifferent to the dualities. That which is day for the self-controlled sage is night for all beings. And that which is day for all beings is night for the sage who sees. The living beings absorbed in mundane life are asleep to the spiritual joy of the self of the realized soul, who remains indifferent to their quest for the pleasures of the senses, the word of spiritual joy. The sthita pragya is awake in the night when all other living entities sleep. The night of the observant sthita pragya is the night, is the time during which the all living entities are awake. What is night for all beings in the time of awakening for the self-control? And the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. So sthita pragya is able to control his senses very naturally. There are two types of intelligence that directed towards soul and that direct to, directed towards matter. The intelligence directed towards the soul is night for all uh, other entities. Just as at the night, in the night, people sleeping do not know what is happening at a time. So all living entities do not know uh, the things which are being pursued by the intelligence directed towards the soul. But during that night, the sthita pragya or sayyam in controlling his senses is awake, not sleeping. In other words, he directly realizes the bliss from fixing his intelligence on the soul. When the living entities are awake, with intelligence directed towards the material sense objects, they realize um, directly the happiness, lamentation, and bewilderment of those sense objects upon which their intelligence is fixed. They are not sleeping, but that is night for the muni, the sthita pragya who does not experience fixing his intelligence on those objects at all. But he does see those objects. He looks upon Prashyataha, all those sense objects, which give happiness and distress to the people bound in samsara with disinterest. This means that he accepts the required sense objects for his survival without being affected. Hmm. So um, this is a very nice uh, purport out here. Huh? So, um, Ya Nisha Saro Bhutana, Tasyam Jagrati Sayyami, Tasyam Jagrati Bhutani, Sa Nisha Pashyato Muni. Ya, with spiritual intelligence, Nisha, like night, Saro Bhutana, for all beings, Tasyam, in that night, Jagrati is awake. Sayyami, a self controlled man of fixed intelligence. Yasyam, in which state, which is directed to the search of sense objects, Jagrati remains awake, Bhutani, ordinary being, Sa, that material intelligence, Nisha, night, Pashyata, for the enlightened, Munehe, thinker. Spiritual intelligence, which is directed towards the soul, is like night for the materialistic, for the materialistic common people, who are enchanted by the material energy. One who is Thita Pragya, however, remains awake in that intelligence. And when intelligence is absorbed in sense objects, the common person remains awake. For the sage who perceives transcendental reality, that consciousness is the darkest night. In other words, such a person accepts sense objects in an appropriate way without being attached to them. It is natural for one whose intelligence is fixed to control the senses. For this reason, Sri Bhagwan is speaking this verse beginning with the Ya. Intelligence is of two types. Intelligence inclined towards the self, Atma Pravana, and intelligence inclined towards material senses, Material sense objects, Vishay Pravana. Intelligence that is inclined towards the self is like night for all conditioned souls. Just as the sleeping person does not know what happens at night, similarly, the bewildered souls do not know what one attains by this spiritual intelligence. But one who is of fixed intelligence remains awake in such a night. He who directly experiences the bliss related to the intelligence fixed in the self. The conditioned souls remain awake in the second type of intelligence which is directed towards the attainment of material enjoyment. And they directly experience lamentation, bewilderment, and so on, according to their respective absorption. They are not asleep to it. Wise persons of fixed in, in spiritual intelligence, however, do not experience anything in such a night. 
They remain indifferent to the sense objects that give happiness and distress to materialistic persons and remaining controlled and detached only accept those sense objects that are needed for their maintenance. Sarartha Vashini Prakashika Vritti Those who are of fixed spiritual intelligence naturally achieve perfection in controlling all the senses. They are knowledgeable persons in the real sense. On the other hand, the intelligence of ignorant people who identify the body with the self remains absorbed in sense objects. Such persons who are attached to sense objects are called materialistic or ignorant. The Skanda Puran states, Adnyanam tu nisha propta diva dhyana udiriyati. Knowledge is like day and ignorance is like night. Everything in the kingdom of that most wonderful controller, Shri Bhagavan, is wonderful. What is night for one person is day for another. For an owl, night is like a day, while for a crow, it is night. Uh, night. An owl, an owl sees only at night, not during the day. Similarly, a man blinded by ignorance cannot have the illuminated vision of one who knows the absolute truth. Those who know the absolute, however, always see Sri Bhagwan, the radiant personification of all knowledge. They never contemplate objects of the senses. Just as the lotus leaf never becomes wet, even though it remains in water, similarly, one who is sthita pragya never becomes attached to sense objects, even while he is living in contact with them. Verse 70. Apuryamanam achalam pratishtham samudra pa samudram apa pravishanti advat tatvat kamayam pravishanti sarve sashantim abno tina kama kami apuryamanam completely full in all directions. Achalam pratishtham fixed and unmoved samudram the ocean apa the waters of many rivers Pravishanti enter yadvat just as tadvat similarly kamaha the agitations of the senses yam whom a person of fixed intelligence pravishanti they enter survey all saha he shantim peace apnoti attains no not kamakami who desires to fulfill his own desires just as countless rivers flow into the ocean which is full and always still without causing any disturbance to it. Similarly, various desires flow into the mind of one who is still a prajna. Yet his equilibrium is never disturbed. Such persons alone can attain peace, not those who strive always to fulfill their desires. Saratha Varshini, nirlepta, nirlepta, or remaining unattached to sense objects, indicates that one does not become disturbed even after coming in contact with a sense object. Sri Bhagavan explains this idea by speaking the verse beginning with Apurya Manam. All the different rivers pour so much water into the ocean during the rainy season, they cannot cause it to overflow. Achala Pratishtham means whose boundary is not crossed. Similarly, various sense objects also present themselves as enjoyable and desirable to one who is fixed in spiritual intelligence. But just as water pouring into or flowing out of the ocean, makes no difference to the ocean. Similarly, those who remain unaffected both while enjoying sense objects and when bereft of them are called Sita Pragya. Only they attain peace, that is knowledge. So very nice verse. Apuryamanam achalam pratishtham Apuryamanam achalam pradishtam samudrama bhatkamayam pravisari sapo tinapamakami. So, Apuryamanam achalam pradishtam. Samudra Mahapra Pravishan Yadvat Tadvat Kama Yam Pravashan Sarve Shandya Mahno Tinaka Kahamim Apurya Manam always being filled Achala Pratishtam sterilly situated Samudram the ocean Apaha waters Pravishan the enter Tadvat as Tadvat so Kamaha desires Yam unto Pravishan the enter Sarve all Saha that person Shanti peace. Apnoti achieves no, not Kamakami, 
one who desires to fulfill desires, one who desires to fulfill desires. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant of desires, that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Although the vast ocean is always filled with water, it is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with so much more water, but the ocean remains the same, steady. It is not agitated, nor does it cross beyond the limit of its brink. That is also true of a person fixed in Krishna consciousness. As long as one has the material body, the demands of the body for sense gratification will continue. The devotee, however, is not disturbed by such desires because of his fullness. A Krishna conscious man is not, is not in need of anything because the Lord fulfills all his material necessities. Therefore, he is like the ocean, always full in himself. Desires may come to him like the waters of the rivers that flow into the ocean, but he is steady in his activities and is not even slightly disturbed by desires for sense gratification. This is the proof of a Krishna conscious man, one who has lost all inclinations for material sense gratification. Although the desires are present, because he remains satisfied in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, he can remain steady like the ocean <clears throat> and therefore enjoy full peace. Others, however, who fulfill desires even up to the limit of liberation, what to speak of material success, never attain peace. The fruity workers, the salvationists, and also the yogis who are after mystic powers are all unhappy because of the unfulfilled desires. But the person in Krishna consciousness is happy in the service of the Lord and he has no desire to be fulfilled. In fact, he does not even desire liberation from the so-called material bondage. The devotees of Krishna have no material desires and therefore they are in perfect peace. Apuryamanam achalam apratishtam samudramapa Apuryamanam achalam pratishtam samudramapa pravisham yadvat tadvat kamaya pravasham tisarve sashanti mahno tinakamakami Yadvat as apaha water pravishanti enters samudram the ocean apuryamanam which is always full, achala pratishtam, it remains steady, its water never crossing the shore. Tadvat, similar is Yam, that sage who survey kama, all desires, provisionti, enter to be enjoyed, for they cannot disturb his mind. So he alone, apnoti, attains shantim, peace too, but kama kami, a person who's uh, who nurtures desires, not that apnoti cannot achieve that. As the ocean remains full and unchanged, though many rivers and streams enter into it, the person of firmly established wisdom attains peace despite all desires entering him. But a person who nurtures desires uh, cannot know peace. Just as the rivers enter the ocean, which has um, fixed shores and is never quite full, so the objects of enjoyment enter into the Siddha Pragya, but it remains peaceful. This is not so for the desires of those objects. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled, uh, but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. This verse describes the Siddha Pragya's condition of not being affected or agitated when he accepts the sense objects. Just as in the rainy season, rivers, apa, here and there, enter into the ocean, almost filling it up. A means almost, purya manam filled, but not being able to completely fill it up, not being able to go beyond the shore, achala, achala pratishtam. In a similar manner, the objects of sense enjoyment, kama, come to the siddha pragya for his enjoyment, but cannot disturb him. Just as whether the rivers uh, enter or do not enter the ocean, the ocean is not disturbed at all. The Siddha Pragya uh, sa, remains undisturbed whether he gets objects of enjoyment or not. He attains the stage of Jnanam, Shanti. So this is the purport. Uh, and, um, 
so mm, next verse will carry on vihaya kamanya sarvan uman charati nispruha nirmamo nirahankara sashantim adigachati vihaya giving up kama material desires for sense gratification yahu sarvan all Puman, a person, charati lives, nispruha, desireless, nirma maha, without a sense proprietary, without a sense of proprietorship, nirahankara, without false ego, saha he, shantim, perfect peace, adhikachati attains. A person who has given up all desires for sense gratification, who lives free from desires, who has given up all sense of proprietorship, is devoid of false ego. He alone can, he alone can attain real peace to become desireless means not to desire anything for sense gratification in other words desire for becoming krishna conscious is actually desirelessness to understand one's actual position as the eternal servitor of krishna without falsely claiming this material body to be oneself and without falsely claiming proprietorship or anything in the world is the perfect stage of krishna consciousness one who is situated in this perfect stage knows that because Krishna is the proprietor of everything, therefore everything must be used for the satisfaction of Krishna. Arjun did not want to fight for his own sense gratification, but when he became fully Krishna conscious, he fought because Krishna wanted him to fight. For himself, there was no desire to fight, but for Krishna, the same Arjuna fought to his best ability. Desire for the satisfaction of Krishna is really desirelessness. It is not an artificial attempt to abolish desires. The living entity cannot be desireless or senseless, but he does have to change the quality of the desires. A materially desireless person certainly knows that everything belongs to Krishna. Isha vasyam idam sarvam. Isha vasyam idam sarvam. And therefore he does not falsely claim proprietorship over anything. This transcendental knowledge is based on Self-realization, namely knowing perfectly well that every living entity is the eternal part and parcel of Krishna in, in spiritual identity. And therefore, the eternal position of the living entity is never on the level of Krishna or get rid of him. This understanding of Krishna consciousness is the basic principle of real peace. Vihaya kamaniha sarvan puman charati nispruha so, Vihaya Kaman Yas Sarvan Pumams Charatinis Pruha Nirmamo Nirankara Sashanti Madigachati Vihaya giving up Kaman material desires Yahu Sarvan all Puman the person Charati wanders Nispruha, free from hankering, nirmamaha, without a sense of possessiveness, nirankara, without false ego, saha, that person of fixed intelligence, shantim, peace, adhikachati, attains. Only those who give up all desires and wander free from hankering, false ego and possessiveness, attain peace. Some people lose faith in material desires and no longer enjoy them. Sri Bhagwan is explaining this by speaking this verse beginning with the word vihai. Here, nirankara nirmama meaning that means that only they who remain free from the false ego and possessiveness towards the body and anything related to it attain peace. Vihaya kama sarvan. Vihaya kama sarvan. Puman Sharati Nispruha Nirmamo Nirankara Sashanti Madhigat Chati Yaha Puman, that person who Vihaya, giving up Sarvan Kaman, all desires, Charati, moves through the world, Nispruha, free from hankering. Nirankara Nirmamaha, free from the false ego of I and mine in relation to the body and its attachments, having a divine relationship with the Supreme. So he, Adhigat Chati, attains Shanti, peace. Only a person who lives in his life, who lives his life abandoning all desires, hankering, ego, and possessiveness can know real peace. He who gives up all objects of enjoyment but carries out action without desires for them being devoid of possessiveness and ego attains peace, jnana. 
a person who has given up all desires for sense gratification and who lives free from desires who who has given up all sense of proprietorship is devoid of false ego he alone can attain real peace this verse describes the person who does not enjoy the sense objects at all because he has no faith in them he is devoid of possessiveness and ego regarding his body and objects related to the body uh, nirmamaha nirankara so um, Verse 72. Esha Brahmi sthiti partha nainam prapi vimuyati sthitvasyam antakale pi brahma nirvana bruchati. Esha, this Brahmi of one who has attained the spiritual sthiti situation, partha or partha arjuna, na not enam, this state, prapya attaining vimuyati is bewildered, sthitva being situated. Asyam in this state, Antakale at a time of death, Api, Eva, Brahma, Nirvana, spiritual emancipation, Ruchati, one attains. A path attaining Brahma in this way is called Brahmisti. Becoming spiritually situated after attaining this state, one is no longer deluded. If at a time of death one is situated in this consciousness, even for a moment he attains liberation. Sri Bhagavan is now concluding this chapter with the words beginning with Asia. If spiritual emancipation, Brahma Nirvana, is achieved at the time of death by attaining the state of Brahma for even a moment, then what can be said of the result for one who achieved this state is childhood? Gyan and Karma are specifically um, explained in this chapter and Bhakti is explained indirectly. Therefore, this chapter is called Summary of the Bhagavad Gita. This ends the Bhavanuvad of Srila Vishnu Chikri Thakur's Saradabha Shetika, the commentary that gives pleasure to the devotees and is accepted by all saintly persons on the second chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Saradabha Shini Prakashika Bhakti. Srila Bhakti Nod Thakur states, this chapter is a summary of the Bhagavad Gita. Verse 1 to 10 introduce the nature of a person who is asking questions. Verse 12 to 30 give a description of spirit, atma and non-spirit, anatma. Verse 31 to 38 explains piety and sin within the Vedic system of prescribed duties known as Varnasham Dharma. Verse 39 till the end of the chapter describes selfless action wherein the fruits are offered to the Supreme God or Nishkam Karma Yoga by which knowledge of the self is attained. This is the goal of the aforementioned Jnana and Karma. There is also a description of the behavior of a person who is situated in this Yoga. Thus ends the Saratha Varshini Prakashika Bhakti by Sri Srimad Bhakti Dada Narayan Goswami Maharaj on the second chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Vyaya Kamanya Sarvan Tumam Sharatin is Puha Nirmamo Nirahankara Sashanti Madhigat Chati Vyaya giving up Kama and material desires for sense gratification. Yahu Sarvan all Puman. A person, charity, leaves this puha, desireless, nirmama, without a sense of proprietorship, nirahankara, without false ego, so he, shantim, perfect peace, adhigachati attain. A person who has given up all desire for sense gratification, who lives free from desires, who has given up all sense of proprietorship, and is devoid of false ego, he alone can attain real peace. To become desireless means not to desire anything for sense gratification. In other words, desire for becoming Krishna conscious is actually desirelessness. To understand one's actual position as the eternal servitor of Krishna without falsely claiming this material body to be oneself and without falsely claiming proprietorship over anything in the world is the perfect stage of Krishna consciousness. One who is situated in this perfect stage knows that because Krishna is the proprietor of everything, therefore everything must be used for the satisfaction of Krishna. Arjun did not want to fight for his own self gratification. But when he became fully Krishna conscious, he fought because Krishna wanted him to fight. For himself, there was no desire for desire to fight. But for Krishna, the same Arjun fought for his best, fought to his best ability. Desire for the satisfaction of Krishna is really desirelessness. It is not an artificial attempt to abolish desires. The living entity cannot be desireless or senseless, but it does have to change the quality of the desires. A materially desireless person certainly knows that everything belongs to Krishna, Isha Vasya Vidam Sarva, and therefore he does not falsely claim 
proprietorship or anything. This transcendental mm -hmm. knowledge is based on self realization. Then we knowing perfectly well that every living entity is the eternal part and parcel of Krishna in spiritual identity. And therefore, the eternal position of the living entity is never on the level of Krishna or greater than him. This understanding of Krishna consciousness is the basic principle of real peace. Esha, this Brahmi spiritual city, situation, Partha, or Sanapruta, no, never, Enam, this Prapya, achieving, Vimuyati, one is bewildered. Stitva, being situated, Asyam, in this, Antakale, at the end of life, Api, also, Brahma Nirvanam, the spiritual kingdom of God, Vrachati, one attains. This is the way of the spiritual and godly life, after attaining which a man is not bewildered. Being so situated, even at the hour of death, one cannot, one can enter into the kingdom of God. One can attain Krishna consciousness or divine life at once, within a second, or one may not attain such a state of life even after one, after millions of births. It is only a matter of understanding and accepting the fact. Katavanga Maharaj attained this state of life just a few minutes before his death by surrendering unto Krishna. Nirvana means ending the process of materialistic life. According to Buddhist philosophy, there is only one, only void after the completion of this material life. But Bhagavad Gita teaches differently. Actual life begins after the completion of this material life. For the gross materialist, it is sufficient to know that one has to end this materialistic way of life. But for persons who are spiritually advanced, there is another life after this materialistic life. Before ending this life, if one fortunately becomes Krishna conscious, he at once attains the stage of Brahma Nirvana. There is no difference between the kingdom of God and the devotional service of the Lord. Since both of them are on the absolute plane, to be engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord is to have attained the spiritual kingdom. In the material world, there are activities of sense gratification, whereas in the spiritual world, there are activities of Krishna consciousness. Attainment of Krishna consciousness, even during this life, is immediate attainment of Brahma. And one who is situated in Krishna consciousness, I certainly already entered into the kingdom of God. Brahman is just the opposite of matter. Therefore, Brahmi sthiti means not on the platform of material activities. Devotional service of the Lord is accepted in the Bhagavad Gita as the liberated stage. Therefore, Brahmi sthiti is liberation from material bondage. So, the Bhaktinath Thakur has summarized this second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita as being the uh, contents for the whole text. In the Bhagavad Gita, the subject matters are Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, and Bhakti Yoga. In the second chapter, Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga have been clearly discussed, and a glimpse of Bhakti Yoga has also been given as the contents of the as the contents for the complete text. Thus, end the Bhakti is the purpose of the second chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of its content. Hmm. So, so this is a very nice chapter. We discussed Vihaya Kamanya Puman, Puman is Charati Nispruha, Nirma Mudir and Karas Shanti Vedigat Chati. So, chapter 3 is Karma Yoga, Yoga through the path of action. Arjuna Vacha, Chaya Sije, the Karmanaste, Mata, Buddhir Janardana, Tatkim Karmani Gore, Mam, Nio Jesike Shava. Arjuna Vacha, Arjuna said, Jaya Si is superior, Chet, if Karmana, then fruitier your mata consideration buddhi intelligence that is directed towards transcendental bhakti janardana or janardana tat then kim why karmani in activity in the form of fighting gore in this ghastly maam me neojasi are you engaging keshava or oh, keshava or oh, janardana if you consider that intelligence relating to, related to bhakti is beyond the courts and the superior to fruity work then why, O Keshava, are you engaging me in this ghastly activity of warfare? So Arjuna is asking a question here. And uh, now, now this is actually Karma Yoga, huh? chapter 3. So we'll discuss this next time, uh, chapter 3, for verse 1. Huh? So we'll stop here today. Thank you so much for attending today's class. Um, Hare Krishna, one chakra, brother, Vesha, Krupa, Sindhi, Vesha, Pradana, Pavane, Pio, Vesha, Pio, Pradana, Hare Krishna. Jai Shri Hare Krishna. Then don't pronounce. Hare Vol. Hare Vol. Then don't. Hare Krishna. Man.
Thomas, thank you so Adem much. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Jai Diwani. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Jai Shishu Guru Gauranga Gandhar Vigar Giridari Shishu Radha Vinodhyaji Ki Jai Jai Nitala Prithajat Guru Shishu Bhakti Dhanda Narayana Goswami Maharaj Gurudev Ki Jai Nitala Prishtam Vishnu Paan Shishu Bhakti Dhanda Vaman Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nitala Prishtam Vishnu Paan Shishu Bhakti Dhanda Trivikram Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nitala Prishtam Vishnu Paan Shishu Mat गोरवंद गोसाई महाराज की जय तिला विष्णु विष्णु पांच शिष्य भक्तदान साई महाराज की जय आचार्य के श्री श्री श्रीमद भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव गोसाई महाराज की जय सपरिकर जगत गुरु सुल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोसाई रूपा ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से गौ श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री बासादि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपी गोवर्धन द्वार शिवनाथ मुख से मंडल की जय गंगा जमुना दूस भक्त देवी की जय जगन्नाथ बलदे सुभद्रा सुर सिंह चक्र जूर की जय सर्व विघ्न विनाशन भक्त विघ्न विनाशन सिंह देव भगवान की जय भक्त वर्षि पल्लाद महाराज की जय चारों संप्रदाय की जय चारों आचार्य की जय चारों धामों की जय आकर मठरा चैतन्य मठ की जय केश जी गौड़ी मठ की जय रूपनाथ गौड़ी मठ की जय गिरधारी गौड़ी मठ की जय रवण बिहारी गौड़ी मठ की जय रंगनाथ गौड़ी मठ की जय श्री दामोदर गौड़ी मठ की जय श्री बालाजी गौड़ी मठ की जय श्री गोपीनाथ भवन की जय श्री राधा रमन मंदिर की जय हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय त्रिणी स्वामी शिष्य भक्तिनाथ दंडी महाराज जी की जय नाम निष्ठ संत श्री अनिरुद्ध दास प्रभु की जय मठे से वृंद की जय धाम से भक्त वृंद की समागत भक्त वृंद की जय निताई गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू सो मच फॉर सो टुडे इज एक्चुअली द मकर संक्रांति आई थिंक यस्टरडे एंड टुडे इन साउथ इंडिया आई एम इन तमिलनाडु वी वुड बी द सेलिब्रेटिंग पोंगल So Tamil Nadu is a very big festival, and uh, Shri Gurudev said that we have to give charity on this day to the Vaishnavas, and um, this is the highest charity discussion of Bhagavad Gita because knowledge is the greatest charity. Shri Gurudev told them. So I thank all of you that on this very auspicious day we got unlimited pious merit by discussing Bhagavad Gita of Shri Gurudev, Shri Vishnuji Thakur Pal, Shri Bhakti Rathod Shridhar Maharaj, Shri Bhakti Dhanu Swami Maharaj. We are all. Blessed to study this Bhagavad Gita, and we concluded this chapter two, which is summary study of Bhagavad Gita. So now we are coming to Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga is also very important, and then slowly, slowly we'll proceed to the Bhakti Yoga, middle six chapters, and then the last six chapters again Gyan Yoga. So Bhagavad Gita is the sum total of all the books. Bhagavad Gita, Kinchit Gita, Ganga Jal, La Kanika Pita. So even if we get a drink, one drop of this nectar of knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, our life is successful. So thank you so much. I see uh, devotees, uh, regular devotees, plus Rashmita Didi is also here. So I welcome you back again. Please attend the classes so that encourages us. So we are discussing systematically, reading the books of Guru Dev more than explaining. Hare Krishna. Ah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Actually, I ah. was in India. <laughs> So it huh? was so hectic schedule that I was not able to join any of the classes. Oh, why? Yeah. Uh, actually, because in India we were traveling and uh, we were going to our uh, this relative homes here and there. And apart from that, basically we were living in uh, we were also visiting the village area. So there oh. were no internet, nothing. So it was very impossible to join from India. No, no, that is uh, that is good. Now you are back in uh, United States. Mm. Uh, yes, Maharaj. And uh, mm. we have even planned uh, to meet Guru Dev, but uh, actually we did not uh, uh -huh. got any time because our schedule was so tight. Uh, and uh, right, right, right. basically, the kid health was not good, so we planned that we need to go back to US. But anyhow, oh. we managed to go to Puri. So, ah, Jagannath Puri, all right, all right. Yeah, so we just visited the Jagannath Puri Dham, but the rest, so many ah. things were cancelled. So unfortunately, yeah. I do not uh, got any chance to meet Guru Dev. Ah, no problem. Next time we can meet. Uh, yes. And obviously, yes. he gives online classes, so that is also you can attend because. Yes. Uh, Electronic medium is so powerful now that most of the devotees in part of the world, remote part of the world, they can have conference and um, they can discuss uh, spiritual topics. Uh, so this is a very good tool. Uh, Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Hare Krishna. Dhanavat Pranam Maharaj. Dhanavat Dhanavat. Eighteenth is the Shakti Rai Kadashi is coming on eighteenth. 
that everyone should fast from grains and beans. Although it is called Shakti Laikadashi, Laikadashi is named after sesame seeds, but we as Vaishnavas, I don't think we take eat sesame seeds on that day. But uh, the day after, you can maybe mix some sesame seeds in the water and take bath. If even if you don't have sesame seeds, then next day on Dvadashi, you can say til 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 sesame sesame sesame, and then you can take bath. It is like bathing at the Ganges River. Yeah? So generally, in the next day on Dvadashi day, you can do the charity of sesame seeds, jaggery to the devotees, yeah? but not on Ekadashi day. Don't consume sesame seeds on Ekadashi. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Danda Pranam. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna